All right, in this example, we're told that we have oil flowing through a contraction with a circular cross section, so it's headed downward like this, in the same direction as gravity. And then we also have a manometer, a U-tube manometer, connected to that uh, pipe section with mercury as the working fluid. And we're given some information about the dimensions of this thing. So we know the diameter, D1, the diameter, D2, the height, H, little h, the height, capital H. We also know that we're dealing with oil going this way and, and mercury as the working fluid. We're asked to find the pressure difference between points 1 and point 2. So we want to know uh, P1 here and P2 here. We want to know the difference in those pressures as well as the mass flow rate through this pipe section. So to analyze the pressure difference, we're going to solve that using a mono the manometer that's uh, attached to the pipe. So we know that from the manometer, since gravity is pointing downward, the pressure at P1 will be the same pressure horizontally here. Same thing with P2. It'll be the same pressure at this point. Um, for P1, it's the same pressure there. So let's go ahead and find the pressure at P2, starting with the pressure at P1 using the manometer. So starting at P1, we know the pressure here is P1. And then we're going to go down this distance to the surface all the way down here in the mercury. And so this is, we're moving in the oil. And we're going to add in the weight of the oil there. So it'll be plus rho of the oil times g times the distance we've moved. Now we know that this distance is h and this distance is little h. We don't know that distance, but let's just arbitrarily call it x, that distance there. So the distance we'll have moved downward is capital H plus x plus little h. We don't know what x is, but as you'll find in a moment, it won't matter. All right, so that gives us now the pressure at this point. Now we're moving in the mercury. We can move horizontally over to this point and then move upward to this point on the surface. So we're going to subtract out the weight of the mercury over that distance little h. And then we'll move up to this point right, right here in the oil again, and that distance is little x. So we're going to subtract out the density of the oil times g times little x. And then that will give us the pressure at this point which is the pressure P2. So you can see here that the x term, this x term, crosses out with that x term because this is density of oil times g, g times x. Here's density of oil times g times x. So those will cancel out. So we were trying to find P1 minus P2. So that will be rho hg times g times little h minus rho oil g times capital H plus little h, if I've done everything correctly there. And if you want to do it in terms of specific gravity, it'll be the density of water times g times the specific gravity of mercury times little h minus the specific gravity of oil times capital H plus little h. So that's our pressure. So we found the pressure difference just using the manometer. And if you use the values that are given in the problem, so we're given the, the different heights here, the specific gravities there, and you plug in all those values, what you'll get is P1 minus P2. It comes out to be 7.2 kilopascals. Okay, so that's the first part of the problem. Now for the second part of the problem, we're asked to find the mass flow rate through this pipe section. And in order to find that mass flow rate, we're first of all going to assume that the velocity profiles are uniform at each cross section. So the velocity at one you know, has a uniform velocity profile. Call that V1. Same sort of thing at two. It's going to be the same idea here that it's a uniform velocity profile at speed V2. And the reason I'm assuming that is because we're told that it's a frictionless flow. So we don't have to satisfy the no slip boundary condition at the walls. So we're trying to find the, the, um, the mass flow rate through the pipe. So that will, of course, involve the velocities. And to find the velocities, I can make use of Bernoulli's equation, right? Because from Bernoulli's equation, uh, since I now know the pressure difference, Bernoulli's equation will re relate that pressure difference to the velocity difference. So that will be my connection um, between Bernoulli's equation and um, uh, the pressures and the velocity. So let's apply Bernoulli's equation 
from point one to point two. So Bernoulli's equation will look like, oh, let me write it differently. Bernoulli's equation will look like this. where z is this distance. I'll just have it uh, starting at point two going upward in the opposite direction of gravity. So if we increase z, we increase the potential energy. So that's why we have a plus z here. And then points one and two are this point at the inlet and point two is further down here toward the outlet. All right, so now we can go ahead and substitute in what we know. So we already know P1 minus P2, that's that's what we found previously, that was the 7.2 kilopascals. That was this result. The density that we're dealing with here is the density of oil, because we're moving in the oil here. The elevation difference, Z1 minus Z2, will be equal to, if you go back up to the picture, that's going to be equal to the capital H so Z1 is up here, Z2 is here. That's just our H. And then what we have left are the V1 and the V2. Well, we want to get the mass flow rate. So um, we know that the velocities will be related to the mass flow rate. So let's make use of that information. So we know that um, V2 will be well, let me rewrite that a different way. We know that the mass flow rate, of course, will be the same at point one and point two, assuming that we have a steady flow. It's going to be the density times the velocity. We'll do this at V1 times the area there, pi d1 squared over four. And that's the same mass flow rate that we'll have at location two. The pi d squared over 4 is just because we have a circular pipe. So we can make use of that and substitute in our equation. So we could rearrange, for example, we could write v1 is equal to m dot 4 m dot all over rho pi d1 squared. And then v2 will look much the same. So we could take that expression for V1, plug it in there, and that expression for V2, and plug it in there. So then our equation will be all in terms of m dot. Okay, do you see that? So we now have m dot in for the velocities. We know the z1 minus z2, that's just h, that's a given quantity. We know p1 minus p2, we just solve for that using the manometer, and we know that we're dealing with the density of oil. So we have everything we need um, to write this out in terms of the mass uh, to, to solve for the mass flow rate of the oil. And if you go through the algebra of it, I'm not going to go through all those steps here, but if you go through the algebra of it, the mass flow rate of that oil will be the density of the oil times kind of a long expression here, but let's write it all out. This comes from just doing all the algebra involved in the previous expression. That's what the mass flow rate will be when you solve through all the algebra. Okay, And then if you plug the numbers into that, just so you have it, you'll get the mass flow rate comes out to be 37.5 kilograms per second. I don't think it's you know all that important. You go through the algebra for this, and I certainly don't think it's all that important to plug the numbers in. What I do think important, however, what I do think is important is being able to work through the manometer part of the problem, which is this part. So that gives you the pressure difference. And then being able to apply Bernoulli's equation to get the mass flow rate. So recognizing you need to use Bernoulli's equation, knowing how to find the various terms in Bernoulli's equation, and in particular, how to relate the velocities to the mass flow rate. So if you can do these two steps, then I think you have a pretty good grasp on what's going on. The algebra to get to this and plugging in the numbers uh, I'm less interested in. That, that's really not the fluid mechanics of the problem. That's more of just the uh, being able to do algebra carefully. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the, the example there.